238, this is Five Live. You can get in touch, you can email, you can text, you can follow us on Wittertainment uh, on Twitter. And uh, and also the live stream, which for once is actually worth going to the Five Live website because look at that gorgeous man in the corner. Hugh Bonneville, <laughs> Hugh Bonneville is here to talk Paddington. Hello, Hugh, how are you? Hello, I'm very well. I'd just like to uh, tell your listeners that it's not actually a green room, as you say. It's uh, it's actually an orange corridor. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Exactly. <laughs> We're trying to keep up the showbiz myths. You know, were you, were you well were you well treated? No. Yes, I have my BBC glass of water, so I'm Excellent. very The green room is a state of mind, Hugh, anyway. <laughs> Compare and contrast the facility. Well, the, the thing is here is we're on the, the third floor of New Broadcasting House uh, in the throbbing you're metropolis. You're not to call it that. It's just Broadcasting House. Otherwise, it makes old Broadcasting House feel bad. You know that. <laughs> no, there was a diktat sent round. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making it up. The, you, the, the, it's new, it's Broadcasting House. It's not New Broadcasting House. But as as you, as you walk in, this is genuinely true. If you, I mean, if you've watched W1A starring Hugh Bonneville, you will know exactly what this floor looks like. And genuinely, as you walk from the lift to these studios, you go past so many folding bikes. It's <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, it really is true. So that, for, And as you walk through, you does it feel as though you're back at work? It feels I'm very afraid. strange. I'm expecting to see a sort of camera somewhere, yeah. And uh, But no, the, 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 trying to get into the building is always the, the biggest joy. And then when you are going to do something in if I may say, old broadcasting house, the person telling you where you've got to go, it gets very complicated because, as you say, everyone wants to call it just broadcasting, broadcasting house, house. But the fact is there are two entrances which are completely And different. two buildings. And two buildings. <laughs> yeah, but you've made a Let's TV... be honest. You know, <laughs> we're, we're all aware about how crazy it is, but you've made a TV series out of it. And, uh, <laughs> that's, and the... yeah, that's even crazier. Yeah. And there's another one, is that right? Is that yeah, one? we start filming in January if, uh, if we're allowed back in. Well, if your pass is updated. <laughs> yes. So uh, Paddington Bear, we were just saying uh, in the few moments that we had during the during the sport the reviews are fantastic i mean you you must have known that you're working with a really good script and uh, and, a, and a great director but even you must be going wow everybody loves it yes i mean as you say nobody knows until you know and uh, i i'd seen various incarnations of the film over the months since we filmed it and and the the race against time to get the bear finished to get the his all his furry furry elements in place was uh, very tight. There was even a joke that there was, they were going to be running through Leicester Square with a DVD on the morning of the <laughs> premiere. But they did get it finished ahead of time. And its it, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful film. And I think it works on lots of levels. You may disagree. That's your, your well, title to your opinion. Well, we'll play a clip in just a moment. <laughs> just, just, but just on the subject of the bear, just explain how they've done the bear. It's sort of CGI and animatronic mix, is it? What, well, no, it's mainly all, CGI. It's, it's all CGI, really. It's not I mean, real, Simon. <laughs> you do know that, don't you? <laughs> So I was looking very serious. Well, oh, it is real. It is real. It is real. <laughs> but but, but, it but real. if it were CGI, tell if us it how it would CGI. have been done, even though obviously it's real. Uh, well, no, it, it's all CGI. We did have a, a, a three-dimensional furry bear head reference, but that was really for this for the frame store, uh, you know, uh, animators to get their lighting references and all the technical stuff. So we had this rather inanimate uh, bear's head on a stick that uh, followed us around. So we had an Something idea. Like Lord of the Flies, bear's <laughs> head on a stick. <laughs> so it was. Um, and we had a combination of things, either a, either a stick, it was very prosaic, a stick with a bit of sticky tape on the top, or Lauren, who's the same height as the bear, walking through the shots to give us an eye line, um, or most of the time, thin air, actually. <laughs> Which must be quite... I mean, I know you're used to it, because this is what you do, but even so, it must be slightly tougher to react and... Uh, be emotional or laugh when there's absolutely nothing there. Yes, I had no idea what the hard stare was going to look like until I actually <laughs> saw it on screen. Apart from Paul King, our director, who sort of is Paddington Bear, giving me a vague impression of it. When you, how do you mean he, he actually is Paddington well, Bear? Well, the first time I met him, waiting to go and see David Heyman, actually, we were both waiting for a few minutes. And, and within, he's, the, he's the producer. Who, sorry, David Heyman, who produced it and produced all the Harry Potter films as well. Uh, he, we were just sitting chatting, and within about 30 seconds, I thought, this is Paddington Bear I'm talking he had the same spirit of optimism and, and a sort of innocent adventure. And like any film director who faces a hundred problems every single day on a film set, he always resets to, OK, that happened, what's next? You know, that, which I think is a very good uh, mantra for any film director, to trouble, always try and accentuate the positive because uh, there is, there's calamity around every corner. So, a, go on. No, I was going to say, there was a lovely quote from Michael Bond. I read in an interview in which he said that he, you know, he'd be very worried about the problem because it's, you know, he cares so much about it. And then he went to see the film and he said afterwards he slept soundly, <laughs> which, was, which I thought was a great compliment. <laughs> that is a great compliment. And also Paul King's wife told me that last, uh, two days after the uh, f you know the, the, the picture was finally locked he slept through the night for the first time in three years <laughs> <laughs> well and there's a lot of things to get right because people ha you know people have a, a, a fantastic fondness for Paddington Bear and if you'd messed up 
you know, the opprobrium which would have been heaped on all of you would have been massive. You know, how can you spoil this national institution? Whereas actually, what I think the result, when people go and see it, they'll think, no, you've added to it. You've made it even bigger. I'd like to think so. And I think what a lot of people have already said to me is that it has all the texture and flavours of Michael Bond's original character while adding something that's a bit more contemporary and, and fun and, uh, you know, the, 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 the new generation can, can lock on to as well as the nostalgia that, that our generation but yeah, and, and, pre- and presumably the challenge for, for coming up with the story, and we'll play the clip uh, in just a moment, because Nicole Kidman is fabulously sort of Cruella, Cruella de Villish uh, mm. uh, uh, in it, and it's scary and got knives and scalpels and uh, uh, and all this kind of stuff. The original stories were were charming, but they were called things like Paddington learns to make toffee yes. and things like that, and that's maybe not the greatest sort of cinematic treat. So they had to do something slightly more uh, adventurous and scary, maybe to just to tap everybody in. Well, I think more to the point, it's uh, it's a, it's when you move something from one genre to another or one one medium to another. You know, these were don't forget sort of bedtime stories, really. I mean, they're short little episodes in the books, and I think to give something a dramatic form in it, a long form uh, structure. There are, are going to be some dramatic licenses taken, uh, you know, particularly with characterization and you know dramatic arcs and peril and threat and. Did you used plot to watch points. the seventies TV show with the, the stop motion Paddington and the rest of the ha- the family animated behind in drawings? Yeah, well, I, my my memory was the Michael Horden one. Is that the yes, Michael yeah, Horden exactly, one? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think everybody, as you say, Simon, everyone's got their own image of what Paddington should look like, and so for a lot of people. It's it's that it's that series particularly, um, but if you go back to the very first book, uh, the illustrations in that book are actually not far off the bear. That that's that's put it this way. This that's what the animators were working from in our version. The one who didn't have Wellington boots uh, and who was a bit more bear like rather than teddy bear like. Yes, uh, let's play a clip. So just uh, explain, Mr. Brown, and and the, I mean a lot of people will know this, but explain who you are and your family, and then we'll play. The clip. Uh, well, Mr. Brown uh, is a in our version a sort of a risk analyst so he's a very nervous man and and sees danger around every corner and can calculate it uh, he has a wonderfully bohemian wife who's who opens her arms to everybody and everyone and everything including a bear that you might find on a station here's a clip ah there it is it's my old duffel coat actually it was mine first well long before that it was mine <laughs> oh was it mr brown really you were in his first day at school. It's lovely. Wooden buttons for ease of pull. And these two sandwich compartments are an excellent idea. I must say, it suits you very well. I never thought I'd like a human coat, but... You look like one of the family. Oh. You're not going to send Paddington to the authorities, are you? You will try at the drug for Guild. Yes, all right. We'll yes. see if they know anything. But if it's a dead end... I'm sure it won't be. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. And of course, it's Ben Whishaw uh, voicing Paddington, and not Colin Firth, and not Colin <laughs> Firth. But but whatever it is that uh, he, Ben Whishaw brought, I, I don't know what it is, but he's got it. Apt, it's just perfect, it's isn't, lovely, it? isn't it? It's sort of age. It's young and youthful, but it's not childlike. I don't know how old Paddington Bear is supposed to be. He's it just is got it slightly, right. But it's kind of it's naive, but wise at the same time. I mean, that's the thing. And and actually, it was funny because listening to it. I know Colin Firth was so was so funny and so gracious when he talked about the conscious uncoupling and how it was heartbreaking. <laughs> but you listen to the Ben Wisher and you go, "That's it. That's, That's it. You know, that perfect. is right." Yeah. Um, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And and I think Colin was extremely gracious in the way he handed on the baton. So we all see him as the as the godfather of uh, of our bear. But Ben is the bear. There's no question about that. And you you also heard there uh, Maddie Harris and Sam uh, Joss, uh, Jossling as the. Um, uh, as, as Judy and Jonathan, who have complete the Brown family. Who are, of course, the characters who need the bear more than anyone because actually they, they need some bear-based bonding. That's right. Well, it turns out the whole family does. And as Mrs Bird, the wise housekeeper played by Judy Walter, said, uh, this, you know, this family needed that bear just as much as... Wait, when he at one point goes AWOL, uh, you know, we needed him just as much as he needed us. And one, and one of the things which is just there, and again, one of the reasons why I think it's got such good reviews, is it is about someone coming from darkest Peru and saying, I'm going to go uh, to the UK and they know how to welcome strangers. And it is about everyone finding a place in London. Uh, and, and it's not overly done, but there's certainly an element of how do you treat people from a different culture? Mm-hmm. in there just a hint of it i think there's there's that but also bear in mind the time that michael created this character it was also the, you know the image of the evacuees on the platforms of britain were a very strong 
uh, in, in recent memory <clears throat> with their gas masks and their, if you like, labels around their neck saying, please look after me. Uh, plus the, the refugees symbolised in, in Mr Gruber's character who you know trekked across Europe to escape trouble in his own country. So you put all those elements together of, yes, the, 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 the immigrant from, from overseas coming to settle in West London, uh, the evacuees and the refugees, uh, that's all that sense of displacement and trying to find acceptance is very much a, a strong flavour in the film. And Doctor Who living down the road. That's always a bit of a worry. As the <laughs> as the Ukippy neighbour. Oh, look, there's a bear! <laughs> I think we can just about get away with that. We're not in an electoral uh, season at the moment. <laughs> not retracting it. Carry no, on. No, no, no. I was just, just, just checking. Anyway, but Peter Capaldi... Clearly having a... I mean, I think you're all having a whale of a time, but Peter particularly is really getting stuck into his horribleness. It is great, and I think my favourite images of the uh, sort of... Fly, that, those fly trap things, those sticky bits of paper hanging down, which... Uh it symbolises his flat, and you can almost smell the furniture. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's, here's an interesting email from Neil Richardson, who is asking a question which I think a number of people want to know. I have one extremely important question about Paddington. It's this. Is it a film that adults can attend without any children and not suffer any embarrassment? Because this is a key thing. <laughs> I think you can safely go on your own, so long as you take your inner bear or your inner child. Uh, I think you'll have a whale of a time. Mark, so uh, I'm obviously Hugh's going to say that because he is <laughs> yeah. Mr Brown. Is it possible to go and see Paddington? I mean, so you're in a I, queue, I, you're in a queue, then the, then you go into the cinema and there's lots of kids and there's popcorn being eaten, the, the code of conduct is being violated all over the place yes. and you're sitting there on your own or maybe with your other half thinking, why are we here and not going to see Hunger Games or... Well, I'm, you know, I'm tempted to be facetious, but actually, because of the spirit of the movie, I'm not going to be. Um, I think, for, for, I mean, I'm 52, so people people of my age could quite legitimately go along. Firstly, because it's been reviewed really well, because I haven't read a bad review. Secondly, because we're old enough to have a nostalgic, you know, memory of, as I said, of the TV series and the books beforehand. And thirdly, because there are jokes for young and old alike. I mean, the film has a great innocence and a great sort of generosity of spirit and charm. And I love the whole, you know, multicultural London thing, but there are jokes about exotic wrestlers and there is a really funny sequence about what happens to people when they have children which is <laughs> aimed at our you know I and mean, it's like like the best kind of of those movies you can i mean i sat there in a room full of uh, stuffy critics who were all sort of you know well they're not all quite as old as me but you know writers like peter bradshaw and robbie collin just beaming and laughing and smiling and all, everyone feeling Nice, but also, the, but also the, jo the jokes are good. <laughs> the jokes are really funny and, and laugh and he, out loud jokes. Uh, Hugh gets a lot of the great lines, but there is one. Uh, I think you've remembered it slightly better than me, Mark. Uh, where Paddington has gone AWOL, <laughs> and the police have arrived. <laughs> says, what was he like? He says, well, he's three foot four. He's wearing a duffel coat and a red hat, and, and he's, he's a, a bear. bear. <laughs> There's a pause. He goes, not much to go on. There you go. <laughs> See, that, it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a good joke. <laughs> uh, so you must be uh, enormously relieved. And there is talk of, um, of another one. Oh, is there? Good. Yes. Oh, well, I have, yeah, I have, first I've heard of it, so that's great. Are you, what, are you going to write it, direct it? No, yes, no. <laughs> yes, it's going, to be our, it's going to be our first movie. But just a, just a word on the certification, actually, because all that nonsense has, has gone away. But mm. the last time we spoke, it was quite a big deal. Mm. So this is a PG, in the way a lot of children's movies are PG, like Toy Story is, is a PG, because there's some scary bits in it. So, there are some scary bits in it, and yeah, like E.T., I mean, it's, and, and Elf, and... Uh, and I think Frozen as well. Uh, the, the, I think it's really important that parents with with kids, I had an email today from someone saying, "Is it? Do you think I've read it's a scary, you know, film for little ones? I've got a three year old." <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah, there is some. The bear is put in jeopardy, and, and, and there's a real sort of pin drop moment where you think all is lost, and etc. And there are some things you shouldn't try at home, kids. We talked about last time, you know, <laughs> hiding in a fridge and things like that. Um, and you know, there's a shocking sight of me dressed up as a cleaning lady. That's not a great thing to you know. Show yes, which, which the BBFC cited as the scene of innuendo. <laughs> <laughs> Which you know, fair enough. Uh, so I, no, I think it's I think it's a perfectly valid certificate, and I think, but frankly, I think uh, kids of all ages will enjoy it. Yes, and it, it's scary in the way Cruella Deville is a very scary character. In the way Snow White and Snow White and so is a very very scary character, and so it it's just playing on that kind of element of fear. Plus the other bit where, and when I went to see it, and when Paddington Bear hides in the fridge and then closes the door immediately, that's a PG. Yeah. Because you can't put that kind of thing in, in, in a you in case of imitative behaviour. Yeah. So the, the the people who made this film knew exactly what they were doing. Absolutely. No, I think uh, 
I think if it had been a 15, uh, 12, then I think we Because I think if it had been a 15, bit. you would have been <laughs> wandering into the realms of the unwell, frankly. <laughs> yes, that wouldn't, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't have been helpful. But that's Ted, isn't it? That's a different... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, so what are you working on at the moment? Uh, I've just, uh, I've, in fact, I've just been paired up with with Sally Hawkins again, and I've. Uh, we, we, we haven't mentioned Sally Hawkins by name, but she, she plays Mrs. Brown. She, Mrs. Yes, Brown, and she yes. is just terrific. She's wonderful, and we've we've just been playing husband and wife again in in the Hollow Crown, which is a part of a Shakespeare trilogy that we're doing uh, for the BBC uh, in Hen- Henry the Sixth uh, parts uh, one and two and three, but we're doing them as two films. Sounds a bit complicated. And uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is playing Richard the Third, and I'm not even going to try and be clever with his surname. No, OK, thank you, because a, n- a number of people are there. But he, he, he's at the top of his game as well. The end. Can I ask you about... Um, you, you've done TV a lot, uh, and obviously Lord Grantham has become this huge character and, Grant, uh, and Downton Abbey is this huge international kind of juggernaut. But you've been in TV uh, for many, many years. But your, uh, your, I just think the first movie I remember seeing you in was Notting Hill mm. as the guy who... I mean, I, I've seen you in other stuff, but the first time I remember clocking you was the guy who famously didn't recognise Julia, mm. Julia Roberts. Mm. But the, but, uh, and your debut was with Ken Branagh? Frankenstein. Yeah, I'd, I'd been in uh, Hamlet with Ken at the uh, RSC. I was playing Laertes to his Hamlet, and, and he very sweetly asked me to have my... Uh, my screen debut was one line in, in Frankenstein. Can you remember what the line was? Uh, I was playing Schiller, who's called, who's the hero of the sports field, and in the context of the film, uh, when when the creature, when, when uh, Robert De Niro's character gets sort of strung up and and uh, lynched, uh, he he's uh, he's a peg leg, he's got a peg leg, and so my character has died of cholera, and because I'm the hero of the sports field, allegedly, my leg is sawn off and sewn on to the creature. So that was my. Uh, that was my billing, really. So I'm a quarter of Robert De Niro's performance, really. But anyway, the uh, so because I was the big bully of the sports field, I barge into into Tom Hulse and Ken uh, and Ken Branner and say, uh, "Get out of my way! Why didn't you look where I'm going?" Or something like that. That was my that was my debut line. You only on had one line, and you can't even remember what that was. <laughs> but that must have been fan- that must have been an extraordinary. It was great, exciting because, moment. Uh, it was because I was working with Ken on a on a writing project at the time, actually, and it was my first time of writing for the for the big screen, and probably the last, and. And uh, he said, come and come and be a part of this. You know, you've only got one line, but you'll be around in several scenes and you'll get the feeling for what a film set is like. And it was a big, epic uh, production that he was producing, starring, directing. You know, he took on a heck of a lot. And uh, it was a, a wonderful experience. He's a very generous man like that. And I learned a lot. Uh, and you're not in Dad's Army? No. Why? Everyone, Everyone else, else is. Everyone else is in Dad's <laughs> Army. Uh, I don't know why. I'm, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, Toby Jones was in the show uh, uh-huh. a, a couple of weeks ago, and mm. it's, it just, again, expectations, though, are going to be so... You could tell that Toby was genuinely kind of nervous because everybody loves, in the way they love Paddington, it's got to be good. Everyone loves Dad's Army, it better be good. Absolutely. I've got my fingers crossed. You talked all the way through about um, how, you know, how much it was a good experience working with, and, and, and I think that end film is, is really good. Was there ever a moment making it when you thought, this might not work? This might go wrong. I tell you what, there was a there was a there was a period when we, when Paul, who, as I say, is a very benevolent, calm, and kind man, uh, it was the the bath coming out of the when the bathroom explodes, yeah, yeah. The which facilities, which, the, when the facilities go wrong. A lot of people probably think that's CGI. It's not. It's absolutely real. And there were they tried it once, and Paul said it's not right. It's not you know it's not gushing out of that. However, you know they, whatever technique they were trying to use, it wasn't right. And it took about, well, it took several weeks for them, you know, coming back saying, can we try it? And they demonstrated again and it still wasn't right. And and Paul saying, you know, I'm so not used to sort of getting cross, but I'm going to have to um, <laughs> because it's really not good enough. And I, this, this is a really key moment in the film. And I did think then, are we actually cobbling to, is it going to be sellotaped together in some way that's not really going to be convincing? And uh, But then, you know, the finished result was fantastic. Did he give people a very hard stare and did they then <laughs> jolly well... Get he, it right. He does. He has. He goes very, very quiet when he's cross. He goes very quiet. So you know, just to you know, keep storm and just get on with the job. Brian Cunningham uh, on this email, having been fortunate enough to attend the Irish premiere of Paddington last night, I'm delighted to report it's a wonderful film which evoked my memories of watching the animated version on the BBC in the 70s. Uh, in total, our party consisted of four children, aged 44, 12 and a half, <laughs> seven and a half, and four. Each one enjoyed the film greatly. However, my four-year-old did cover her eyes intermittently during some of the more intense scenes. I thought it had a great mixture of humour, the scenes in the bathroom being particularly guffaw-inducing, with practically the whole cinema audience rolling in their seats. Action 
peril and sadness. Uh, the length was perfect for a kid's film, the pacing was spot on, and the story was resolved to my kid's satisfaction. Do you think this is going to export? I mean, it's clearly exporting very well to, uh, to Ireland. Do you think the America, I think it opens in America? Uh, in January, in yes, January, it does, yeah. yes. And well, the, the feedback from America so far in the sort of, you know, early, early screenings and tests and all that has been really, really positive. Of course, you never know if it's going to travel. Mind you, we, we never thought Downton would go overseas. Uh, so there's yeah, there's hope because <laughs> it is, it is a very British, it's a very London picture. It's a very British picture, isn't it? The humour the humour is fantastically Mary Poppinsy. It is, and that, that never hurt Mary Poppins. So I, I I think it will. I think any film that is true to itself, or you know, if you believe the world that it's set in, and 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 it's and it's in, in, internally coherent. Um, then I think it's. I think the the yeah you know, the hallmarks are good. The, the markings are good. In a very entertaining sequence, we've just delivered a folding bike. Uh, Do to, I see? Do you? It's a visual gag. It's a, it's a visual <laughs> gag, which is a, a treat for the for the live streamers. Do you have any intention of riding it out of the studio? Answer: I don't think so. I don't think so. But for those who uh, can't see this, we have a folding bike as used in WNA. I won't name the brand, but it is a very common one, and I still don't know how to do them up properly. Hugh Bonneville, uh, star of Paddington, we appreciate you coming in. Hugh, thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely to see you.